This podcast contains factual information only. It is intended for professional financial advisors and does not contain any personal financial advice. You should not make any investment, insurance or financial decisions based on the content of this podcast. Financial advisors help Australians live better lives. And we're great at it. But what about us? For us to thrive in the coming years, I'm here to ask a very big question. How can we live better, run better businesses, and help more clients along the way? My name is Jessica Brady, and I would love for you to join me as I listen and learn from experts who answer these very big questions. I am lucky enough to record most of my podcasts on Gadigal Land. This podcast is brought to you by MetLife 360 Health. MetLife has partnered with Teladoc to provide 360 Health virtual care, which gives your clients access to more than 50,000 local and global medical specialists through the convenience of the 360 Health virtual care app. And best of all, it's at no extra cost as part of their MetLife Protect policy. 360 Health helps to defend against serious illnesses so you can live healthier for longer. MetLife inspired by you. Molly Benjamin is the creator of Ladies Finance Club, which, as the name suggests, is a club to teach women about money. She isn't a financial advisor. And so we talk about the community that she's created, how we can work better together as a team, and some of the learnings around how to engage women in the advice journey. Enjoy. Hi, Molly. Hi. I'm so excited for today's chat. Thank you for being here. Oh, thank you for having me. Excited to be here. Now, I have known you for actually a little while now. It's getting up there, yeah. Oh, my goodness me. And I'm so excited about what you do. It is different to financial advice, but has, I was just saying before we started recording this, like we're an ecosystem. And so I am really delighted to have you talk today more about what you've done, what you're building Um, and how we as advisors can work better with people such as yourself. But before we get into all of the deep and dark questions um, that I want to cover, I think for those of you that don't know Molly, it's important that we go back. Molly, can you tell everyone what your story is? Yeah, absolutely. So I was living in the UK, in London. I was working, you know, a great corporate gig, earning good money, but I was living paycheck to paycheck. I had no emergency savings. Money would come in and money would go out. And Mm -hmm. my girlfriends were exactly the same. And then actually what was really interesting is the women I was working with in the bank at the time, they were the same as well. Like it seemed like we were clueless about our pension, our super. We were clueless about how to get started investing. Like I'd done a little bit um, that I'd learned from my parents, um, but majority of us absolutely clueless. And as I looked at the statistics, I was like, this is kind of scary. And like, I'm trying to learn this stuff and there's no one really doing it for women. Like every time I tried to like pick up a book or go to a seminar, I'd just get lost. I'd get confused. So what I started doing was literally running events in my living room, would bring in like a financial advisor or would bring in someone who worked in finance and would be like, okay, let's talk about this topic. And we just ask some questions, ask some questions, drink some wine, eat some pizza. But then what happened was we quickly um, outgrew my living room. Girls, friends of girlfriends started being like, oh, can I come to that like finance club thing you do in, in your house? And I'm like, okay, let's put on an event in London, see who wants to come. And we sold out. We had like a hundred women there. Most of them worked in financial services. And um, it was, we called it like a money makeover. And we had this amazing financial advisor who's now my business partner in the UK for the UK oh. business. And we spoke about like, okay, like, you know, what, what, what are the basics we need to know? Like building your emergency fund. How does tax work? Um, you know, why do we, why should we think about investing? What should we do with our pension? Where should it be? Like, how do we find it? So all these really basic questions that we had zero clue about. And it was amazing. The energy in the room, the excitement, the just like the women asking questions. And I've worked in financial services a lot of my career. And 
and I've run a lot of events in financial services. I've never seen women ask questions like this, just rapid fire. Um, and you know, like, like me, they missed the money 101 lesson at school because it didn't exist. Mm. And mm. you know, they were just so hungry for this information. And from there, you know, that's where we started running more regular events. And then, you know, corporate started reaching out, asking us if we would do workshops with them. Banks started asking if we would run workshops with their staff. And it kind of really grew from there. So then I moved back to Australia in 2019 started Ladies Finance Club in Australia and again we turned it into an online membership where um, women can come along they get access to a monthly masterclass with an expert and those experts are anyone from you know brilliant um, investment managers we've got someone from NAB Trade speaking us to, to us next week um, other times we've had super experts tax experts, um, budgeting, money coaches, mindset coaches. But it's really all about getting women to engage with their money in a really fun and exciting way. We just ran an event at the ASX last uh, two weeks ago and it was called Investing Isn't a Drag. So we had like a drag queen co-hosting this investing event. We had like Vanguard there, Beta Shares there, E-Invest. We had a bunch of really awesome, NAB Trade, a bunch of really awesome um speakers. And it was just like, I, I remember one of the um, speakers said to me, she's like, in my whole career of 40 years, I've never been in a room where there's such a lineup of incredible female speakers and the room is female. Like, this is the first time I've experienced that. And I'm like, yeah, we want to learn this stuff. We're hungry for this information. Um, but just trying to create a fun, safe community where women can, you know, go and, um, yeah, but <clears throat> we are definitely not the experts. We just create the community. We bring in the experts. We break it down with the experts to make it like everyday terminology. Cause sometimes, and I know you're very good at this, Jess. You're very good at speaking. Um, you've spoken at one of our events, very good at speaking like everyday language, but sometimes we find a lot aren't. So we need to work with them quite a bit on like, okay, mm. that's coming in at way too high level. Let's bring it back. Okay. What are the basics we need to know? Oh my gosh. So cool. I'm so sad that I couldn't go to that investment event because I saw the socials and it looked so fun and it just proves you can have really fun events in this field and they don't have to be a drag. Yes, she did have a phenomenal drag who looked wonderful there. Um, and so a huge congrats to you. And you know, you just touched on something that I think is exceptionally important. Women do want to learn. We do want to learn about money. We just don't often feel safe because we feel silly. And so I would imagine, Molly, a big part of the community is around that um, grassroots learning. I mean, have, what have you found in terms of the insights from the women that you help? You know, why do they come to Ladies Finance Club and what are the big takeouts for them? Yeah, so a big a big. The reason I hear a lot is like, oh, I feel like it's very accessible, it's fun. Um, and for people who don't know where to get started, which is a lot of people when I always say when they're getting their, you know, shit together with money, they're like, where do I even begin? And we like to be like, okay, begin with us. And, you know, so we talk about like, you know, setting up your emergency fund, which we call an OMG fund, you know, getting your bank account set up correct, you know, teaching them the basic foundations of investing. And then, you know, almost getting them to that position where like either they can do it themselves or they can go to an advisor. And, you know, we're very like if someone goes, oh, I just got a big windfall of money, we're always like, you know, seek advice, like you need to go see an advisor. <laughs> um, so we we do a lot of referring out to advisors as it is. Um, but yeah, I think women, it's that confidence piece, you know, we're creating community, um, I love our accountability groups and we jump on like once a month and we talk about what were our wins for the month, um, what what are we trying to achieve the next year, but it's all money related. So you've got all these women talking about, you know, their goals and building their emergency funds and everyone's in different places. Like some people are buying their second, third investment property. Other people are trying to get out of credit card debt. And so it's very inspiring to have all these people in different places um, kind of going on their money journey. And does the UK business work similar to the Australian business or have you noticed that there need to be quite different styles in terms of what you're doing? Yeah, I think like when we look at that financial literacy gap, it really is a global problem. And, yes. um, you know, the issues that women are facing in Australia are very similar to the ones in the UK because that education piece was missed as well. So it's kind of mm. like, you know, and, and I run events, online events in Australia and the UK and the questions are always the same. It's kind of like, what's a pension? Where should it be? How do I find it? Like, mm. just like, such, yeah, there's just such a need for education in 
in those areas. And do you know what I find sometimes when people come to see me, if they haven't found someone like you first, they've gone through a painful, sometimes they've gone through a painful process where they've tried to figure some of this stuff out before they come to see me. It's like the cleaning for the cleaner. Mm. Like they want to try to do it a bit themselves and they get really stressed and really overwhelmed and they finally do it and they sort of throw it at me. Mm. Like here's what I found. (gasps) And I'm like, darling, I could have helped you. This is what we do. This is how we work. And it just, um, it's so basic and so overwhelming that I can't imagine how many didn't meet you and didn't make it to meeting me because Mm. they got lost and confused in the process. And I guess that's why we're both so passionate about what it is that we do. Mm. Tell me, Molly, how much do you know about your community? Like, have you got an average age where they're at in life? I know you said that people are in different um, financial sort of um, parts in their lives, but have you got a, a similar sort of I want to say client based avatar. Demographic, yeah. Demographic, I mean, help me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like across our platforms, we have over 50,000 women. And what, yeah, between the Facebook group, the Instagram, wow. the mail list, all that stuff, which is great. And we've had about, with the UK, we've had about 25,000 women through a workshop, a course, a boot camp. They've come to a webinar, come to a masterclass. So it is like, it kind of, when I started, it was like, people my age and you know early 30s um you know young. Trying to, yeah young. we were just we were just talking about yeah, this young, 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 young women <laughs> yeah so early 30s kind of having that corporate job um but yeah kind of getting started on their money journey but what I'm noticing and what I'm seeing is it's very much shifting to the women in their 40s and 50s now mm-hmm. because these women in their 40s and 50s are going like either the kids have left home or I've just got in separated or divorced or something's happened there they're having a bit of a life change and they're like I don't know how to manage my money or I want to understand so I can have conversations with my partner about money Um, or crap I'm about to retire soon and I don't have I need to be putting more away for my retirement and again so we do a lot of education on like just understanding those basics so then um, you know they're ready to either seek advice or you know they've got just the basic foundations of what they should be doing next yeah and we need to acknowledge that not everyone will get advice and frankly we probably don't have enough advisors to service everyone anyway right now we need to yeah, build that and, that and as you know like the finance industry it's see it is like you know from or oh, whatever it was the royal commission it's it is distrusted amongst people so you know we get a lot of people always asking us well who do you like who do you trust um so kind of a bit of a vetting process there um mm. but yeah it is it's interesting um that kind of people just have this misconception of like i can't afford advice because it's so expensive and you mm. kind of like a lot of the time you're like it's going to save you so much more money in the future if you go get advice now mm. um so yeah it's an it's an interesting one totally kind of bust that myth <laughs> um how have you commercialized ladies talk uh, i was gonna say ladies talk money because that's what i have I, know, and I love ladies talk money you guys do i love your articles <laughs> you do awesome work thank you and we don't commercialize that that is our little not-for-profit um thing but how have you commercialized ladies finance club <laughs> yeah absolutely so we do um, we have our monthly membership where it's like a very affordable fee and then so monthly and then they get access to a bunch of like amazing experts. They get access to masterclasses, um, accountability mm-hmm. groups, tools, templates, all that kind of stuff. And then also we do partnerships as well. So, um, for example, last year we ran a virtual trading contest with eToro because, mm-hmm. you know, a big thing I noticed was like women – don't want to invest because they're scared and they don't physically know how to invest. So, you know, that was like, you know, play money. It's not real money. Um, Let's do a little um, contest online, you know, with educational webinars throughout. So we were like, yes, this competition is short term, but investing is for the long term. And I was really proud the other day when the market um, hit a bumpy, bumpy road and on our um, Facebook group where we've got about 9,000 women now just over, um, so many of them were like, well, I'm not stressing because I'm a long-term investor and blah, blah, blah. And I was like, yay, yeah, right. awesome. <laughs> um, so, yeah, so that was uh, just, yeah, giving people that chance to, you know, dip their toe in the water without any risk at all. I had never seen anything like this. And 
I hear this over and over again, particularly from young women, which is like, oh, I'd like to make my money work hard for me, but you know, I don't want to invest in shares or anything that'd be really risky. And I'm like, listen, lady, we got to chat. Um, and, and I think that you were able to create a space where people could learn with psychological safety Ooh. and they could take risks knowing that it wasn't their real money yet. And as you say, the community, what I watched and what I think happened was the community were helping each other learn, each other understand more about what they were investing in. I thought it was a really fascinating social experiment, actually. Yeah, no, it, it went well. And a lot of people did say afterwards it gave them that confidence to open a, you know, a broker account. And, and that's the biggest thing I think people think when you get started investing. They have this, again, this mis- misconception that they're going to have to invest tens of thousands. Like Mm -hmm. we're like, no, you can get started with $50. You can get started with a small amount. You know, you can dip your toes in the water. So I think as well, like, yeah, there's just a lot of myths that need to be busted. Again, as you said before, like that gambling one, like I don't want to lose all my money in Mm. the stock market. And, you know, when they have that basic education and information, they go, oh, okay, I get it. That that's actually, if I diversify, if I spread my risk, you know, that's quite, it's it's not as it's not as risky as you know they originally think. Yeah, and I mean, um, I saw something online. I don't know if it was on your page or not, but it was like, oh my gosh, I couldn't put two hundred dollars in shares, but we'll happily buy a two hundred dollar dress that I never wear. <laughs> I was like, yeah. <laughs> that's yeah. hilarious. Yeah, um, absolutely. And I actually had someone off the back of that um, investment simulation that you ran come and seek advice from us because it gave her the confidence to, and she from memory. Um, had done a very good job. She'd bought her own first house um, in her 20s and had quite a lot of money stockpiling in an offset account. And I think from your um, investment project, I don't actually remember yeah. what it was called, sorry, yeah, okay. um, realized, oh, I can do this and it's not what I thought it was going to be like. And then, yeah, reached out, I think, when it came to investment selection and sort of strategy, that was sort of where she was like, okay, I need help. But um, it's amazing to think that something like that has you know, had so many impacts to so many women and led women f- definitely because I know because they came to me for advice. So a huge thank you. Oh, no, I think, yeah, I think anything that can, you know, just increase women's confidence around investing because, you know, as I said, that's that's one of the biggest blockers I see. It's just kind of like not knowing where to get started, thinking it's so risky and, yeah, mm. the confidence piece. And I guess for us in the advice landscape, it's really important that we do – honestly, critically think about how we talk and what jargon we're using and how when people stay really quiet and say they don't have any questions, it might because they don't have any questions, but more probably it's because they either feel stupid or disengaged. And so we have to be honest about how we can be better at this. Yeah. And I think as well, we did a really interesting post the other day and I had hundreds and I'm not kidding, hundreds of DMs after this post. Um, it was a story and it was just talking about like, have you as a woman felt excluded from the financial services industry? And guess countless tales, um, of women going, yes, when I went and got my bank loan, the bank manager didn't look at me once. Um, mm-hmm. even though it was my money, they still try to put it in my partner's name. Or when mm-hmm. I, you know, when I went to buy that car or when I went to get that, yeah, yeah, mortgage or just story after story, when I went and saw my advisor, they just talked to my husband the whole time. Um, so yeah making sure that we're always including women. And even if it is a couple, like, you know, if they're not, yeah, as you said, if they're not asking questions, it's because it needs to be broken down. But um, I know you are definitely, definitely um, a massive advocate of that and the work you do. Oh, yeah, but I I think I can be better. (laughs) I think we can always all be better. Um, And, you know, right now financial services speaks to women about, um, you know, coupons and budgeting and it and yeah how to um, save yeah mm, but not how to invest yeah, yeah. Not how to grow your wealth not how to invest yeah absolutely we see that as well so if you are a financial advisor and you have any literacy think about that if you are from a bank or large financial institution please think about that there is a fabulous report from the uk um bank on that and i'll put it in the show notes because it's terrifying mm. terrifying um what hasn't worked, Molly? What have you tried that's been not as successful as you'd hoped? Anything that's been a huge disaster? Anything you'd go back in time and change? 
Well, I, I regret not doing a podcast earlier, so we're just we're about to bring one out. So I'm really excited oh. to be. Yeah, we, we're doing a, um, a ladies finance club podcast. But mm-hmm. I think like there's, I mean, in business and, you know, for those people who run their own businesses, you know, there's like <laughs> learnings every single day. <laughs> and sometimes, <laughs> yeah, and sometimes, you know, things work, things don't. I remember we tried to do um, a debt, like a debt series and like a debt workshop and no one wanted to engage with it at all. And I thought that's really interesting. Obviously, like people are either ashamed because I know there's a lot of women in debt um they're either ashamed or uh, there's some kind of barrier there so again it was like pivoting okay well how do we then you know create that space where people feel like they can come and they can seek the help um Mm -hmm. yeah so that you know we we we, we're we're like (laughs) what doesn't go wrong multiple things every day but it's just kind of like you know learning and trying to like I still think we're still trying to nail um, you know, our model of a lot of the times women, when they leave the membership, they're like, I just don't have time. I just want someone to do it for me, but they don't right. want to seek ad- advice. So it's kind of like, well, <laughs> you know, you've got two options. You can either, you know, um, take action now, but you know, they're, they're busy. They're mothers. They've got a thousand things going on, finding their super, getting investing. It's just another thing thing on the list and they just don't seem to get around to it um so yeah trying to come up with you know we're still pivoting all the time about how to like best engage with the community that's going to be the most helpful um so yeah we've got some exciting things kind of hopefully on the horizon that are going to happen but um yeah i think like the the session we did like that project we did with Ito where it was like play money, fake money, there's no risk, you know, give yourself, dip your toes in the water kind of thing. That seemed to, yeah, work well. Mm. And I mean, you're pretty ferocious on the socials in the nicest possible way. Do you do all of that yourself? Like practically, how do you manage, how do you manage all of that? Yeah. So I've got an awesome team. So when it comes to the content, I really like to, you know, lead the content because I feel like, I am the target audience and mm-hmm. um, so I kind of get, I feel like I get what they don't get because I don't get it. Um, so <laughs> with um, with a lot of the social, like I obviously have a great team, I have a great designer, um, half of them are based in the Philippines, a couple are based in Australia and okay. um, they do a lot of kind of the the grunt work as well. Um, but again, mm. like that's, that's a business thing and we're still learning every day. And I think like all entrepreneurs, you know, it can be a little bit of a, a roller coaster where some days are great, other days nothing seems to work and then just kind of keep working on those systems. Mm. Do you post every day? I feel like you post every day. Yeah, we post pretty much every day. And then, um, yeah, we try and do stories. But again, like, you know, I see other people online and like or other, well, not that we consider ourselves influencers as any sense. We think of ourselves more as like education, like a, a tech platform. But when I see a bunch of those influencers, I post every single day. They've got stories. I've got TikToks. I'm like, oh, where do you find the time? <laughs> Oh my gosh. I'm like, how do you do every day? I'm like, Jessica, you will do once a week. J- but that's Jessica, great, you, you know, consistency yeah. is key. Once yeah. a week is great. It doesn't always happen, but never mind. <laughs> um, let's talk about that. So ASIC changed some rules yeah. around Finfluencers. Yeah. Uh, did that have any impact on you? It had very little impact on us from the sense okay. that, um, you know, it had like, I know a lot of the Finfluencers and their friends mm. and it definitely had a massive impact on them. Mm. Um, but a lot of the stuff we were doing, we, you know, we're, we're const- we always work with financial experts. So from that yeah. sense, um, we were fine. I mean, affiliate links, there was like, we did very little of that anyway. Um, okay. cause we don't like to align ourselves with one financial institution yeah. ever. So, um, we like to keep our independence that way. So, um, yeah, look, you know, I think it was a really good reminder to some people out there that like, you know, I've seen some shocking posts or, you know, and like some shocking in- advice where I'm like, that is not a financial education. That is like crossing the line. So definitely mm-hmm. guidelines need to, guidelines needed to be brought in. I just think it's, 
you know, I've seen a couple of influencers kind of pull out the space or really pivot. And a lot of their education was really helpful. And it really inspired a lot of people to get started investing. And, you know, I look at that and I just go, it's education. It's nothing to do with advice. But they're just now kind of completely kind of stepping out of the whole sector because they're just like, it's too risky for me. And for them, they're, you know, a lot of them, it's a side hustle as well. Um, they've got a full-time job anyway, so they don't want to like, you know, be hit with a, a lawsuit or anything like that. So nah, that wouldn't Ooh. be very nice. Do you know that I feel very mixed emotions about the changes? Because to your point, well, to both of the points that you make that sit on either side, like what they did was create learning opportunities for people that traditionally either haven't sought out our industry and frankly may never. Mm. Um, but I think obviously the, <laughs> I, uh, the, the, here's my portfolio. You should buy X stock and Y stock. And then, you know, I was talking to, um, a fund manager, a friend of mine and her and I were chatting about it. It was, it was an, it was coming, but we didn't have sort of the full information about what was happening. And we sort of played it out and we were like, well, What's the worst thing that can happen? Honestly, to these poor young people that financial advisors were up in arms about, who frankly don't want them as clients for the majority of them, to be really honest. Like, let's call a spade a spade. They, 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 they would not be. I don't think they would be profitable clients. You know? <laughs> right. I'm like, what's the worst that can happen? Okay, so they follow this idiot buy list and they buy, and then it spectacularly blows up. Let's say that that happens. Let's do worst case scenario here. I mean, doesn't everyone growing up do stupid, silly things where they learn. And obviously betting the house would be a really dumb idea, but I'm like, it'd be a bloody good investment lesson. It would be very good investment lesson. Yeah. It could be painful and make them gun shy, but I'm like, hang on. I think that there needs to be a bit of honesty around, yes, it's not ideal, but financial advisors were up in arms about what people were doing online because, of course, if we did anything that sniffed of that, mm. we would lose our license and have huge business ramifications. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. And, look, I've never shared what I invest in personally because it, that's not what we're about. We're not like, here's, mm. our, here's my portfolio. <laughs> like, mm. but like, like, But we definitely will educate about ETFs and we love to go into, like, the different ETFs that are out there and now we can't do that as much, which is, um, you know, fine. Um, no qualms there. But yeah, it is this piece where I just find like, if we leave people to do it themselves, at least we're like helping them with that basic financial education, you know, get out of debt first before you start investing. It's for the long term, um, you know, use money you don't need in the next three to five years. You know, it's basic stuff we teach. It's not like we're going, you invest in this portfolio. Um, but mm. it's the basics that people don't have. And then I see what's happening in the crypto space. And it's these lessons that people don't have. They're trying to make a quick buck. They're not understanding the foundations. And it's just yeah. like, they don't think they can afford property. And they're just like losing their money in crypto. And so, you know, it's, yeah, I think, mm. yeah, it's, I think there was definitely guidance needed to come out. Absolutely. Yeah, right. Agreed. I think everyone, and I think everyone in that space agrees with that as well. Um, but yeah, it's just, it is, it is an interesting one. RIP to those of you who were invested in some of the cryptos that uh, didn't survive over the last few weeks, sending you lots of love. Oh, um, yeah. What's next? What's on the card? So you've got a podcast coming as part of Ladies Finance Club. Very yeah, exciting. We've got a podcast coming. We're doing um, an online course as well with Danielle Coolia, who wrote the Share Plus City series, which is really exciting. So mm. she's a um, fabulous uh, financial educator. So we have that coming up as well. And then, um, yeah, we're working on a couple of other um, other programs and um, yeah, just trying to grow the membership as well. And we're always <laughs> looking for wonderful female, sometimes male, but a lot of um, female um, financial uh, speakers. So if anyone is listening and they would like mm. to explore that, please do get in touch. Um, if, yeah, you want to get involved with Ladies Finance Club, we would love to have you along the journey. We love to create a platform for women learning, but also women who are in the financial industry. And we've connected and had so many wonderful, inspiring, talented, intelligent women on the platform. And we just like, we love them. And, you know, it also 
people see our, our members see them they start trusting them you know and also there's a massive lack of female role models in the financial services industry like everyone can name warren buffett not many people can you know name kathy woods so um you know mm -hmm. like we we need we need like a lot a lot of women up front and um center so yeah definitely Agreed. Get and hey, are you doing mostly face-to-face -face stuff now that we're back in the sort of real wide world? Are you doing online? Where are your events mostly? Yeah, so at we are, at the moment we're mainly online. We are. I just wrote a book actually. Um, what? Yes. How did you forget to tell me that you wrote a book? Well, you're quoted in it, remember? Um, so you did that um, fantastic. You've got a little quote in it. Um, I think I need some coffee. Yeah. I did. I <laughs> so interviewed a bunch of um, women in finance and then oh I wrote God. this book. It's called Girls Just Want to Have Fun. It's going to be out in like October. Um, so we're going to be doing a bit of a roadshow around Australia and again working with uh, super experts, financial advisors, doing a bunch of different educational, um, very practical um, kind of like after work seminars all around Australia for that one. So we're working on that at the moment as well. I cannot believe I forgot that. I'm so sorry. Um, <laughs> so, okay. don't miss it. so if you are a financial advisor that's, and this has piqued your interest and you're not in a capital city, it sounds like at the moment that's still great because you're doing so much online. And then when the book launches, it sounds like you're going. Yeah, that's where we're hitting more months. regional areas. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So yeah, if you're in Newcastle, Coffs Harbour, the Sunny Coast, Gold Coast. Um, yeah, definitely reach out. Molly, I'm so excited for you. Um, okay, how can people learn more about you? And then I'm going to ask you some rapid fire questions. If that Ooh, is rapid good. fire. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, so obviously we're over at ladiesfinanceclub.com. We have our Instagram at ladiesfinanceclub. And we also have um, a Facebook group, uh, which is Ladies Finance Club Money Chat. And what I love about that group is there's a bunch of mortgage brokers, a bunch of um, financial advisors in there and, you know, really helping out people with questions they have. And it's just a really mm. nice community. It's really positive and it's, um, yeah, it's uh, I, I love that space. It's just a safe space where women can come and ask their questions. We've got women mainly from Australia but all around the world on there and it's, um, you know, people like to share their wins and, yeah, if they're not sure of something, just getting second opinions. Huge congrats to you for building such an amazing, positive community where people are honestly probably voicing things that they have been trying to figure out for years and giving people confidence in a space that is quite often pale male and stale and very overwhelming. So mm -hmm. a massive congrats. I'm very, very proud of you. Oh, thank you so much. And I love the work you do with Ladies Talk Money as well. They're so, yeah, it's great articles, really good information. So we send a lot of people there too. Oh, thank you. All right, let's do some rapid fire questions to round out today's chat. So I'd love to know what is one thing that you do to look after your mental health? Um, exercise, but actually straight after the ASX event, I ended up in hospital the next day with an emergency appendicitis. So <gasps> I haven't been able to exercise for the last couple of weeks and it's driving me crazy. Um, so, but exercise is so key for me and my mental health. What? Okay, let's pause there. There's a few things. Firstly, I hope you're okay. Um, <laughs> And emergency appendicitis, you poor thing. Um, what do you do? Do you have like a schedule? How do you keep yourself accountable? I mean, it was freezing when I took the dog for a walk this morning and I still did it because I had a dog, but I think if I didn't, I would have gone back to bed. <laughs> How do you keep this going for you? Yeah, absolutely. So look, it's definitely something I, I'm, I'm still nailing my perfect morning routine. And I can say mm -hmm. that as someone who clearly doesn't have children. Um, but mm -hmm. yeah, I haven't, I have, I definitely haven't nailed it yet, but generally trying to get up and the first thing to do is like move my body somehow, whether that's a run, a walk, meeting a friend for tennis, um, but I'm just about to move to Bondi as well. So I'm going to be switching that for beach runs now. So looking forward to my new sea change. Woohoo. You'll be out there freezing in the mornings doing laps or whatever they do. Um, yeah, I can't say I'll be swimming in winter in Sydney. I'm a Queenslander originally, so that won't be happening. Oh, bless you. No, you'll have five puffer jackets on. Um, <laughs> what is a piece of advice that you would give to your younger self if you could go back in time? Oh, that's such a good one. Um, mm. I think. Oh, that's a really good one. Advice to my younger self. Um, well, I think just like even just very recently, I kind of had a bit of a, a reflection of kind of where I'm at and, you know, just having that moment of like what you've created um, can be changed. So, you know, at the moment, like I find I'm working a lot. I don't have a lot of free time. And, you know, it is actually going like, well, you've created this so you can change it. 
Um, mm. So now it's up to me to, you know, design the life I actually want to want to lead and the, the life that's going to bring me the most joy and, you know, really achieve the things I want to achieve. So I think just remembering that, you know, you, there's a million things you could literally be doing with your time. I've chosen this, but that can change as well. So, you know, I can pivot. I don't, you know, just have to stick to this one thing I can yeah find other ways of working that is going to bring me kind of that that joy as well it is deeply resonating with me also because I and I think it will with so many financial advisors because you know you can build something that is seen as quite successful and it can be quite successful and you can be building all the things and ironically at the detriment Oh, you know, you helping people build their great life can often be at the expense of your own. And that's why I wanted to start this podcast specifically because it can be so easy to be taken on that journey and almost feel powerless as everything grows and becomes fantastic and remembering that you can control that and you can yeah. make changes and it might be really hard and it might feel counterintuitive. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, I was speaking to an entrepreneur last night at this dinner and um, she said exactly the same thing. She's like, I walked away from, she had started a non-for-profit. She's like, I had to walk away because it was burning me out. And I think I speak to so many female business owners and they do all suffer from burnout. So it's kind of trying to find that balance. And um, mm. yeah, I think it's it's such an important one that just you get so in the day to day, you forget to zoom out and look at what was that bigger picture, what was why did you originally, you know, want to start your own business or why did you want to go into that sector? What were you trying to achieve? I feel you. I feel you. I feel you. Um, what is one big thing on your bucket list that you're yet to tick off? One big thing on my bucket list. that I'm, Okay, I really want to do a stand-up comedy course. So that is um, on my bucket list at the moment. So, um, yeah, I'm going to give that a whirl this year. Um, mm -hmm. yeah, just thought, why not? Give it a give it a twelve. <laughs> totally. I mean, you said course. Do you want to go and like do a stand up thing? It's just on the bucket list. I mean, I don't know. I mean, I've, I've clearly have not been very funny on this podcast, but you know, not, not really a podcast. Sorry. And I don't know if like you know, it's not like I, I consider myself funny, but I just feel like it would be really interesting skills to learn and just. Yeah. Nah, you're funny. I look, I laugh at your Instagram stuff. You've got a funny sense of humor. Yes. I'm, I'm coming. If you go to the show, I'm coming and I'll laugh at anything that reminds me. I like you. money and, fi yeah, financial, finance and comedy. That could work. Bit of magic on the side. Why not? <laughs> oh, my gosh. That's such a – I love these questions. I get such interesting, unique insights from people. It's so good. Um, Last question, my dear, before I let you go and enjoy the rest of your day. Do you have a book that I should read – apart from yours, which comes out later in the year, uh, for my fake book club. For your fake book club, look, I'm going to be a proud sister here. And my sister bought out um, a book last year um, called Life is Tough, But So Are You. And it was about the really helpful things, um, the really practical and helpful things that got her through um, when she was diagnosed with like worst stage cancer. And um, it's become a bestseller in Australia. So I definitely, obviously, as a as a buyer sister, I would say check out that book. But it is, it's really helpful. And she's had so many people reach out all over the world who've said like it's helped them so much during their um, cancer journey and also how to be a really good support person to someone going through um, a, 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 a light when life throws you a curve bill, whether that be a death, cancer, divorce, um, yeah, uh, something where you weren't expecting it to happen. So, yeah, Life is Tough But So Are You by Bryony Benjamin. It has done really well. I've seen it everywhere. Yeah. Um, so huge congrats to her. And look, financial advisors are often coaching people through really large, big, life, scary things. And yeah. so that will be very beneficial for a lot of people. I've added, literally added to my list just then. Oh, awesome. Great. Molly, it's been so nice to speak with you. It's been too long. Thank you for your insights. Um, we very much appreciate it. And good luck with the next chapter and phase of Ladies Finance Club. Thank you so much for having me. It's been a blast. <laughs> <laughs>